up against Joan of Arc, the savior of France. She was the savior of France, and she's the reason why France is still its own country. Without her, it would be a part of England. How did she become this leader? To tell this, her story, we must understand what was going on at the time. Now, let's travel back about 600 years ago. Joan was born during the Hundred Years' War. You see, the English and the French were fighting over who would rule over France. The English had already taken over the northern part of France, while the Duke of Burgundy had taken over the eastern. You see, the two, the two had made an alliance. Conditions in France were in dire straits. The French citizens were suffering from famine, plague, and war, while the French army was suffering and, like, they were demoralized and dwindling. To keep the peace, King Charles had signed a treaty with King Henry, claiming that King Henry had the heir to the throne. However, fate did not have it that way. King Henry died six weeks before King Charles, and the French citizens wanted Charles the Dolphin, King Charles' son, to be crowned king. But the only way that they can do that is being uh, having King Charles being crowned in the city of France, which was in English territory. No king and enemies at the door. Let's go back to Joan. Joan's family were peasants, but they were very devoted Catholics. This was not normal for a peasant girl. She had a very strong character and was not afraid to be her different. Things started to change when Joan turned 13. She had started hearing voices of long dead Christian saints. At first, they told her to be a good Christian. But then, they told her of her mission, that she was to lead a French army and defeat the English and crown the Charles the Dolphin King. Can you imagine her struggle to accept that?
convincing to gain people to support her cause. But eventually, when Joan was 17, she finally met with a dolphin. She identified him even when he was disguised as an ordinary man in court. She knelt in front of him and said, Gracious king, I bring you news from God, that God will give you back your kingdom, and crown you king, and drive out your enemies. I am the messenger from God. Set me bravely on your work, and I shall raise siege of Orleans. This made a huge impression on Charles. Within weeks, she was given an armor, a sacred sword, and a banner depicting her saints. The transformation from a peasant girl to a noble warrior was complete. So, is this it? Was Joan just a propaganda? Perhaps that's what the French leaders wanted her to think. But she was much more, according to history. At first, she begged Charles to go to Orleans. He didn't have anything to lose, so he sent her on her merry way. As soon as she arrived, she gave food and raised morale of the French people. Her optimism and conviction was infectious. Military leaders did not take her seriously at first, but she still insisted on being in the battle. Her presence encouraged the French soldiers, and victory came easily. Within 10 days of her arrival, the English were driven out of Orleans, which was her major victory. This is where she gets her nickname, Maid of Orleans, and the French people were in love with her. She was changing the momentum of the war. The French had gained hope knowing that God was on their side, and they could finally be victorious. First, she started gaining back land, first Orleans, then Pate, and finally Reims, the city that King Charles was to be crowned in. And so, this is it. The Dauphin was crowned King of France four months after meeting Joan. Mission complete. Sadly, she was captured by the Burgundies and sold to the English. They did not execute her immediately for fear she would have become a martyr. So the church tried to crown her as a heretic, discrediting her with demoralized the French, wouldn't it? Her trial lasted six months and was recorded in the trial of condemnation. Even then, Joan was still very defiant of her captors, even when she was staring death in the face. If I am not in the grace of God, may God place me there. If I am, may God keep me there. I would be in the saddest place if I were not in the grace of God. But do you think that if I were in a state of sin, the voices would come to me? They told me you were fools, and that I was not to trust your fine lies and sweet charity. You promised me my life, but you lied. You think that being alive is nothing but not being still dead. It is not the bread and water I fear. The bread has no sorrow for me, and the water no affliction. But to shut me from the light of the sky, and to keep me from everything that brings me back to the love of God, while your wickedness and foolishness tempts me to hate him. Towards the end, Joan confessed that she did not hear the voices. She immediately took it back, but it was too late. She was sentenced to be burned at the stake. Her death continued to be a powerful inspiration, which eventually drew the English out of France. About 20 years after her death, there, the Catholic Church had a retrial of Joan of Arc and found her innocent of all charges. Joan of Arc, was a leader. She gave hope when there was none. She led with a fearless heart, and her legacy was enormous. France is a sovereign nation now that, because of her, instead of letting the English expand into France, they lost all land in Europe, back to the French. Regardless of whether or not she actually heard the voices of God, Joan herself believed Upon that conviction, she transformed from a peasant girl to a noble warrior. The exact extent of Joan's help in the war has always been debated among historians. Some may have thought she was a naive, hot-tempered girl, while others thought she was a military genius sent from God. To the Catholics, she is truly a messenger of God. She has become a symbol of national conscience to all French people. 